Hi there, Mr. Thompson here with a video math lesson. Um, we're looking at, the, at uh, Pythagoras' theorem, and we're going to look at how Pythagoras' theorem um, works when you're looking at three-dimensional objects. Okay, so I'm going to draw here a three-dimensional object. This is a box. Um, you could call it a rectangular prism. Um, hopefully, if you, you can kind of visualize here, we've got sort of the, that you might call this the front You've got the top, and then you've got sort of the side, and then you can kind of see with these dotted lines, those are kind of behind. You wouldn't see these if it was a solid object, but then you've got the bottom, okay, the back, you might say, and maybe this you'd call the left side or something. This one over here would be the right side, okay? If you are not good at visualizing three-dimensional objects on a, on a two-dimensional projection, what you can do is um, actually get a box and um, kind of situate it in a similar way as it looks to this and you know you can use a shoe box or a tissue box or whatever it is something that preferably if you can see inside of it somehow maybe an open top box type thing or if you can make something like this out of wires or sticks or something like that then um, you know go to town and that kind of thing can really help you to visualize and see what's actually going on here um, so with problems like this you might be, um, be asked to find uh, a distance from between two corners Okay, so here we've got these two orange marks, um, this corner to that corner. And you might, it, you, the question might say, find the distance between these two points. Okay, um, and here we've got a line drawn between those two points. And this is where it gets a little bit um, hard for some people to, to visualize. What you would want to, you could do here is maybe put a string from one corner to the other in your actual box. But it's going from the bottom corner, bottom left corner, to this top right corner in the back. Okay, so it's kind of going straight through the middle of the box. This point here on that orange line would be kind of in the middle of the space in the center of the box, and then this would be going down towards the bottom. Okay, so the question is how do we, how do we find that distance? And what we have to do, there's a few steps that we'll write out here in just a second, um, but what we have to do is find some right triangles within this box. So here I've drawn a, another orange line that actually goes along the bottom of the box. It would, it would lay flat on the bottom of the box if you, you could kind of draw it in even on the bottom of the box. Um, from the bottom corner where one of these points were from the line that we're looking for to that other corner and what we get then is this straight up part creates a right triangle and we can draw in our little um, square that says this is a right triangle. It's kind of, um, you know, diagonal through the middle of the box, this triangle. You could almost think of this as a sort of a piece of paper. If you cut it in the shape of a triangle and it was just the right sizes, it would just slot right in okay, from corner to corner. So that's a right triangle that we can use um, to find that distance. Okay, If we know this, line, this distance along the bottom um, and then this distance up the side, then we can use Pythagoras' theorem to actually uh, find that distance that we were asked to find. Okay, But if we're not given that distance, on the diagonal distance on the bottom here, um, we'll have to find that as well. You, a lot of times you'll only be given sort of the outside edges of the box, 8, 10, and then 5. Okay, So um, we'll, have to, we'll, we'll look at this in a second, calculating this. Um, you know, how do you find that one? How do you find that distance? Right? You're going to have to actually find that first. So we'll go through that in a second. Um, first, uh, there's a few steps that you can um, work through that, that'll um, kind of keep you on the right track and make sure you're um, doing the right thing here for these problems. Okay, the first thing is to identify uh, the right angled triangles, any right triangle or triangles within the 3D figure. So you can draw these out, you can kind of sketch them into, um, and maybe you need to copy the original figures into your, um, onto paper or whatever, and then you can sketch the, the triangles like I've done here with my orange one. Um, you can sketch those into um, the problem, okay, or, or identify them, or maybe shade them in, or whatever works for you, okay. But then you actually need to draw those triangles um, separately, okay. You want to actually draw them, redraw them outside the box, a lot like we did in the word problems with Pythagoras, um, so that you can um, then kind of label them really accurately and. Um, not uh, get them muddled up with all the other lines that are going on. Really kind of take them out and, and see them really clearly. Okay, so we're going to draw them separately. We're going to label all the sides that we know, okay, with the known values or with variables or pronumerals for the ones we don't know. Okay, and then finally we'll use Pythagoras' theorem 
uh, to solve and find all the unknown uh, variables, okay, all the unknown values. So those are our four steps. Let's look at how this works in, a, in an example. So here's that exact same problem, okay? We want to find, ultimately we want to find um, this distance from the two, from the orange, between these orange dots, all right? Um, so across the center, but as we mentioned before, we're going to actually have to find that one first. So the first thing, I've identified my right triangle. I've, I've drawn out this orange one within the problem, okay? And uh, I'm now going to draw them separately, as we said. So here's my orange triangle drawn outside the, outside the, the, the figure. Um, and I know one side of this triangle is 5, right? The, that outside edge here was part of it, and I know that that's 5. Okay, this bottom side of the triangle, um, I don't know. Um, and I don't know the hypotenuse. That's the thing I'm trying to find. That's the, ultimately the answer to this problem. Okay, so I'm going to call that x, um, and that's the thing I'm looking for. When I find x, I'll be done. Okay, and I'm going to call the bottom c. Okay, and I've done that for a reason. It doesn't matter whether you call it a, b, or c, or q, or whatever, as long as you stay consistent. But I've, I've called it c for a particular reason, and, you, and uh, maybe you'll figure it out here in a little bit. Okay, now in order to find C, I'm going to draw another triangle. Okay, and that is this triangle um, as that's sort of half of the bottom of the box. Okay, now so I've used these two blue lines as the sides and then this orange line uh, as, the, as the third side, what will actually be the hypotenuse, because that's going to be a right angle triangle as well. It's a, this is a, um, there's, the bottom is a rectangle, so. Um, and I know this side is 8, right? So I'm going to put my 8 there. I know that. And I know this side is 10 here, okay, from my drawing. I don't know this one, and I'm calling that C, okay? And now you can see uh, why I've called this one C. Uh, C is commonly used for the hypotenuse. So I'm using it as the hypotenuse of this triangle. Um, but this is actually, this side here is the same as this one here, right? So I've labeled those the same letter. Okay, and that's pretty important. That, that'll help me later on. Okay, so we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem, and I'm first going to solve the one I can solve. I can't solve this one because there's two sides I don't know. This one I can because there's two I do know and just one that I don't. So um, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and I'll fill in for a, I'm going to put 8, and for b, I'm going to put 10. All right, 8 squared is 64, and 10 squared is 100. So we add those together to get 164. And that is what c squared equals. Okay, now, at this point, often in problems, you will take the square root of both sides and find c. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and that's sort of a little tip. When you have to do this twice, and you'll see why in a second, it's actually really convenient just to leave it as c squared. Okay? Um, and we'll talk about this more in a second. <clears throat> okay? So, but I know now that c squared is 164. If you want to plug that into your calculator or um, reduce, you know, take the square root and find it, that's fine. Go ahead. But I'm actually just going to leave it. All right? Now, for this next one, okay, I'm going to fill out Pythagoras' theorem, um, and I'm going to have basically 5 squared plus c squared, which may, if, you, if you're thinking about this, you'll see that makes a lot of sense why I've left this, left this as c squared. It's going to be 5 squared plus c squared equals x squared. Okay, so I'm going to put the, and I know um, c squared equals 164. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put x squared equals which is kind of like the c squared here, but it's x squared because I want to find this hypotenuse, okay, equals uh, 5 squared, right, for this side here, okay, plus c squared, right? It's c, c the, well, the usual thing is c squared equals a squared plus b squared, but my leg is actually called c this time, and it's, I need c squared here. Well, I know what c squared is. It's 164, right? Now, so that, you can see there why I've done that. I left this as c squared, because I knew I was going to have to plug c squared into this. Now, what, a lot, a lot of people will make mistakes here. They will solve for c here. They'll take the square root of 164, right, and they'll get c equals 12.8. Uh, now, it's 12.804, something, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's along, all, all these square roots, if it's not a perfect square, if it's not, doesn't come out to an even number, uh, uh, um, a whole number, then you know you'll get an unending line of decimals, um, and you'll be you'll want to round it, right? And you might round it to twelve point eight, and then oh later on you're gonna so you might say c equals twelve point eight, and then you'll go here and you'll say twelve point eight squared, but twelve point eight squared is one hundred sixty three point eight four. Okay, so if you took your rounded number and plugged it into your calculator and squared it, 
you would actually get something that wasn't quite right. You'd get right here, you'd be putting 163.84. When really, we know it's just 164. It's really, really easy. And because I left it, not only did I make things easier on myself, I've, I've maintained my accuracy. I've, I've kept it exactly what it should be. Okay? That's why you never round in the middle of a problem. All right? You always just use all those decimals that you can and then round at the end. Um, or don't, don't you know, save yourself having to round it like, like I did here. Okay? So let's keep going with this problem because this is already getting to be a long video. 5 squared is 25, and five, 25 plus 164 is 189. That's equal to x squared, so we take the square to both sides, and x equals 13.7. Um, okay, and I've rounded that to the nearest tenth. The, be careful, make sure you look at the instructions and, and round it exactly as the instructions tell you. Maybe it'll say two decimal places or nearest meter if they've given you units and things like that. But um, that's it. So good luck and see you next time.